We're often asked why four of our AGM batteries are the best batteries available on today's market. Today, we're gonna to tear one open and we're gonna tear open a conventional battery and show you the differences between them. Later in the video, we're also going to look at the business case for Fall River batteries as well. While the initial capital cost may be slightly higher than a conventional battery, we will demonstrate and we can show you why the through life cost of the battery is significantly lower than any other battery on the market. Hi, I'm James Hortop, Managing Director of Merlin Power. We're the UK distributors for Fall River Battery. So what makes Fall River different to every other battery on the market? There's two main differences. The first is their pure lead design and the second are construction differences. With regards to pure lead, they're 99.98% .98 pure. What does that do? It reduces the internal resistance of the battery. That means that they charge faster, they discharge faster, so they're great for starting engines and running inverters and other things like that. But also, because the internal resistance is so low, it means that they can be recovered from disastrously low voltages. There is a video here on YouTube where I took one of our batteries down to approximately five volts, left it for, I think it was three weeks, and we were able to recover the battery. No other battery can do that. The second part of this is the construction of the battery. The number one killer of AGM batteries is the shedding of the reactive material from the plates within the battery. And when we tear one down, I will show you exactly what I mean. Before we start tearing batteries down, it's important to look at how they are constructed and what the things are that can be improved to enhance battery performance. Each one of these items is called out in the diagram and can be either improved or value engineered to produce a superior or a low cost battery. The battery grid or plate is the functional part of the battery. In a low cost battery, the grid is pressed from a roll of lead and then pulled apart to form a grid that resembles something like a chain link fence. There isn't much surface area for the active material to bind to and the sharp edges of the lead can cause wear with vibration. On the other hand, Full River uses a cast grid where pure lead is pulled into a mould. The result is a stronger plate that resists vibration and doesn't flex as easily and has a much higher surface area to bond to. The active material is lead antimony compound that is pasted to the grids. Once pasted, Full River grids are then baked in an oven for a full 10 days. In the case of a standard battery, the cure process is typically just 24 hours. This extended curing process means that the active material forms a much stronger bond with the grid, so shedding is much reduced. High quality separators in Full River keep the individual cells contained and apart. Too thinner material will result in shorter battery life. The individual cells are then connected together by a bus bar in series to give a 12 volt battery. In a standard battery, these are spot welded together and driven through holes in the case. This means that any vibrational movement will physically stress the cells and movement will increase the rate of active material shedding. Full river batteries feature a bus bar that runs over each cell partition and are individually epoxied to the case and the case lid. Therefore, the bus bar becomes a structural and doesn't move with vibration. Removing these significant structural weaknesses is a key reason why Full River will resist applications where shock and vibration exists. Low cost batteries are usually integrated into a relatively flexible case. You can actually see the battery flex when you pick it up, especially in the larger format cases of 200 ampere hours or so. This movement stresses the internal bus bar and internal cells. Full River uses an ultra tough ABS case that not only doesn't flex when you pick it up, but also resists harsh knocks. Standard batteries then have their lids thermally welded to the case. Full River, on the other hand, epoxy seals them shut, making the case and lid a solid and structural single piece. Because AGM batteries are effectively sealed, temperature causes pressure differences. An overpressure will result in a safety valve opening to prevent the case bursting. Full River batteries, due to the epoxy sealed cases, can run at a much higher internal pressure and therefore temperature, meaning they can be operated at extreme charge and discharge rates or temperatures without blowing the valves open. Full River is fitted with high quality brass terminals and hardware, allowing for really good electrical connection. Poorly maintained terminals on standard batteries, which often corrode, are a leading cause of brownouts and poor electrical system operation. So it's time to tear some batteries open and have a look at what's inside. This battery is a conventional lead acid battery. This is our Full River AGM technology battery. And you'll be able to see the differences. Um, obviously, don't try this at home. So we've taken the tops off both batteries. Immediately, the first thing you will notice is the difference in thickness of the cases. 
and you can see within the standard battery it's very flexible and you can see when I move that that the plates are actually moving inside. Compared to the full river battery where it's much thicker cell wall material and there's no movement in that whatsoever. So that means every time there's some vibration all of those cells are moving about and all that active material is starting to be shed from the plates. The other thing that you'll notice in the top of the battery straight away are the bus bars. And you can see the bus bars here connect each one of the cells together and they're actually shot through the cell wall. And that means every time that battery case moves, all of the bus bars move and all of the cells move as well. Again, it helps to create shedding of active material. So you can see there that the bus bar is actually moving both cells. It's transmitting the force across all of the cell plates. In comparison with the full river battery, now the bus bar is not on the top of the plates here, it's actually still within the casing. And the reason being is that the bus bars go over the cell walls and then they're epoxied into the lid of the case. And you can see it here, um, it's not very pretty I'm afraid, but where I've cut the top of this, this battery off and then I've cut it in half, you can see the bus bar is actually welded into the top of the battery with epoxy. That means that the cells, the bus bars, the casing is all one single piece. That means when there's vibration, it all moves together and you're not shedding active material. So now let's have a look at some active material. You know what I'm going on about. So I'm gonna pull this, this cell out here. So you can see that's come out quite easily. As I pull this out, you'll see active material falling off the plates. One of the things that you'll notice here is just how flexible that plate is. And you can see it, it's still attached with the bus bar at the top. But as I flex that, see there's no strength in that whatsoever. And as I'm doing it, you can see the active material start to flake off. And that's because it's an expanded grid. Like I explained earlier, it's a single piece of lead that's been stamped, pulled apart, and then the plate has been pasted. And you can see they're not very strong at all. And you see the active material just starting to, starting to fall off the battery. Now, in comparison, let's extract a cell from the full river battery. Now, let's see if I can do it, because they're actually compressed in really, really, really tightly. Ugh. You see the difference. Right, can't get it out. <laughs> I can't actually extract this cell pack, it's in so tight. Um, that's actually part of the construction. When they man manufacture the battery, they compress them and they push them in, so there really is no movement in there. However, where I've cut this battery in half, I can actually extract a cell directly. The first thing you'll notice is it's, it's much stronger. It actually holds its own weight. It's not flapping around like a piece of paper. When it's pasted um, in the factory, when they paste these, they actually put them in an oven and they cure them for, for 10 days, which means that the uh, active material is well adhered to the plate itself. But you can see there's not as much movement at all. In comparison, that plate's rather like a, uh, a piece of paper and it just sheds active material everywhere. The four of one, if I really abuse it, it will still shed, of course it will, but you can see the difference. Um, it's like chalk and cheese. Okay, so we're now convinced of the quality of a Four River battery, but how does that work in the reality of the commercial world? While on paper the initial outlay of a Four River is up to a third more, the actual cost per cycle and overall ownership is less. Using a simple Google search, we took two other competitive batteries and used the advertised price and specifications. Taking the manufacturer's own data sheets, we were able to see expected life cycles compared to cost. These were a Varta dual purpose 105 ampere hour AGM, a Victron 110, which is actually 100 ampere hours, and a Full River DC 105, 105 ampere hours. They cost 194 pounds, 280, and 299 pounds respectively. Each battery is advertised as being able to provide 400, 600, and 1,300 cycles respectively, down to a 50% depth of discharge. If we simply divide the cost by number of cycles, we can see the cost per cycle. The Varta battery comes in at 49p, the Vitron at 47p, and the Full River are over half at 23 pence per cycle. This doesn't account for labour time for replacement, call-out, or on costs for lost revenue in a commercial application. 
Furthermore, Forever is the only battery out there that can be recovered if accidentally discharged to a catastrophically low level, which is below about 8 volts, something that happens all too often. So, the cost per cycle is less, but what about the life over a vehicle? According to information from our own customers, they're generally seeing two to three years from a Varta or a similar battery, five years from a Vitron, and seven or more years from a Full River. Taking the same costs and those lifespans gives us a cost per month and the actual cost, including replacements, in a 10-year lifespan of, say, an ambulance, command unit, or off-grid installation. Again, the cost of breakdown, recovery, labour, shipping, etc. hasn't been included, but as you can clearly see, even without those additional costs that the Forever offers significant through life savings. This directly impacts the costs to you or your budget. Imagine multiplying those savings over a fleet of 100 vehicles. So there's two Full River ranges. We have the Full Throttle series. These are the thin plate batteries designed for high cranking applications. So they're great for running bow thrusters, for starting engines, agricultural, plant equipment, etc. Then we have the DC series, which are the thick plate deep cycle version. These are suitable as an auxiliary battery on a vehicle, domestic battery bank on a boat, uh, or for an off-grid power supply. The DC series comes with a five-year warranty. The full throttle series comes with a four-year warranty, and nobody else offers such a warranty with their batteries. That's how good these are, and that's how confident we are of these being suitable for your heavy duty critical use application. So when you're asked what the difference is between a standard lead acid battery and a premium full river pure lead AGM battery, you now know the difference is in the detail. It's about the pure lead technology in the plates. It's about the forging process. It's about the uh, curing process of the active material on the plates. It's about the heavy duty case. It's about the over the partition welds. It's about the epoxy sealing, etc. And all of these little details all build up to produce a battery that is industry leading. If you'd like more information, please click on the link below or give us a call on 01202 697979. Thanks very much for your time.